Observer is a visually stunning first-person horror game by the people who made Layers of Fear. It's set in a dystopian future and following Dan Lazarski, an elite police officer referred to as an observer, whose speciality is invading people's minds. Atmosphere. This is a hard one. While undoubtedly the bewildering visuals played a large part of the atmosphere, I found that I just got used to it very quickly and ultimately wasn't particularly afraid of it. In fact, most of the time I was lost in sheer wonderment, at the time and effort that must have gone into making it. For me, there was no sense of dread, unease, only mild apprehension when I knew something bad was going to happen, but these sections were so rare and fleeting. There were moments where I felt they were trying too hard, like the part where you drag around the floating TV that makes baby noises, or the part where you have to answer questions with a Chiron job interview. These parts were eerie, but really they were such small sections in a much larger experience. For me, it seems the atmosphere got lost in the confusion of the spectacle that is the game design itself. It's like someone shouting boo in the middle of a fireworks display. You're so used to weird things happening, you get desensitized to it. No Harry Masons. Scares. With the whole game being strange and confusing, it's hard to pick out the genuinely scary moments. There were chase sequences that felt a little unnecessary. Being chased around a glitching environment by a weird monster didn't really put any fear into me, it just sort of fell flat, even when it caught me and killed me. Only near the end of the game when I was out running this mass of tentacles did fear start to creep in, but sadly this section was over quickly. There were many random jump scares that ranged from forced and cheap to well executed and well done, however the cheap ones seemed to prevail. Many of these you could see coming a mile off. Again, the Chiron job interview is a good example. When you knew something bad was going to happen and there wasn't anything you could do about it, but still it got you when it did. Whilst there were a few good spots, it's again outshadowed by the mass of uninspiring horror elements. There's still no Harry Masons. Sound design. Everything from Dan's gravelly voice to the eerie muffled hum of the night vision was fantastic. The soundtrack was weird and wonderful and the glitching effects travelled through the game which just showed how much effort they put into presentation. They did a great job with the voices for certain characters. Janice, the building owner and his incredibly labelled breathing made it difficult to talk to him every time you had to. Overall the sound design was very impressive, that's one Harry Mason. Gore. Whilst there are a few sections where I found Dan clambering through mounds of organic tissue and entrails, these sections were brief. In my opinion, this didn't need to be a gore fest, and what was in the game was there merely to represent the organic elements of travelling through these damaged mines. That's two Harry Masons. Story The basic story is Dan receives a call from his estranged son and finds a headless body at the place they were meant to meet. After scanning the place he finds a contact in a place called The Stacks. He arrives at an apartment block and gets caught in a lockdown. He finds various murdered people and invades their minds to find clues on what happened to his son. I found the story confusing but with large parts of the game you see yourself delving through broken minds and dreamlike environments, making sense of various people's pasts from nothing more than 10 to 15 second moments, it's understandable. As the game progresses there are strong hints of frictional games as Soma, which turns what would have been an interesting plot twist into something familiar and the concept has unfortunately done better in Soma, making the final score 2 out of 5 Harry Masons. Whilst Observer is a frankly dazzling experience, it seems to rely on common horror tropes that have been done many, many times before, and many times better as well. If weird and bewildering experiences scare you, then maybe you'll find this game scarier than I did. Again, I'd like to remind you the whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games, and if you don't share this opinion, then that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I spent too much time admiring the glitch art walls, I did not scream like a banshee or run away from the computer, and I advise you don't either. There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. And remember to always go check out Bumps in the Middle of the Night. Peace.